So we have an amazing lineup of artists for you. Um, so with that being said, uh, the artists that will be joining us as part of our competition um, are going to be, as you noticed on your screen there, their images. We have uh, Elvin uh, Alcia, and I hope I said that correctly. Martrice Alicea. Alicea, that's yes, right. Yes, we got it, yes, Alicea. <laughs> you gotta put a little bit of uh, <laughs> uh <into> that, <laughs> <Yes>. right. <laughs> uh, Martrice Roach, uh, we have Tasha Williams-Torres and uh, Suleiman, no. Unkway. There we go. I was like, oh, I, you know, me and my, my southern accent, it gets in the way sometimes. It gets in the way sometimes. <laughs> but uh, I can't leave out my speakers. We have some phenomenal speakers joining us tonight. We have Jakari Harris, who is the executive director of the George Floyd Memorial Foundation, yes. as well as Kyle Learman, who is the CEO of When We All Vote. So um, I don't want to delay us any longer. I want to sort of just jump right in and have the artists introduce themselves formally, right? And tell us, you know, the mediums they are, they usually practice in along with where they're from. So uh, let's jump into that. Uh, I can't wait for that. Let's let's get the artists on the screen so we can yeah. check them out. Yeah. And um, for all of you all who are joining us tonight, I want to know where you all are watching from. So in our chat, drop in the chat where you're viewing from. Um, and you know what? It doesn't hurt to also shout out who you might be rooting for. You know, it's kind of good for the artists to see uh, yes. <laughs> if they have uh, what the competition mm -hmm. is looking like. So I'm going to pass the baton over to Suleiman. So Suleiman, would you mind sharing with us? Hey, Suleiman. <laughs> who hey. <laughs> what you're all about. So jump in. Tell us uh, a okay. little bit about where you're from and the medium you're working on. Working in. All right, my name is Suleiman Anque. I'm one third of uh, Three the Art Way. I'm working with acrylics on camps today. I might do a little bit of marker with that as well. Uh, but yeah, art is my life and I'm about to live it artistically. Nice. Suleiman nice. is showing off. Of course, he acrylics, oh. markers. You're showing off, Suleiman. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> Happy All to right. have you. Who do Thank we want you. to pass it? Who do we want to pass it to next, Mark? Uh, Chanel. Let's pass it to Tasha Williams Torres. Hey, Tasha. Hey, everybody. Nice to meet Hi. you. I'm Tasha Williams Torres. I am originally from Westchester County, New York, and I've been a Newark resident uh, for almost ten years now. I love it here. I have been a creative my entire life, and I've been drawing and painting since I could hold a pencil. I work primarily in acrylics on canvas, and I am also a digital illustrator. So I'm excited to be a part of this and put my whole life and soul out in public for the world to see. Oh, I love it. I love she it. She's putting her soul out, audience. That sounded like it. winning words. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who do we got next, Chanel? Who do we got next? Let's go with Martrice Roach. Where are you? Hi. Hey, y'all. Hey. Oh, I love this shirt. I love that shirt. <laughs> Thank you. It, 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 my camera is inverted, but y'all know y'all know what it says. Suli <laughs> 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 this is for you. Oh, 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 oh she's coming for you. She's coming you for you. I'm, I'm only joking. I'm a huge fan of Suli <laughs> <laughs> So my name is Martrice Roach, and I am from New Brunswick, New Jersey. Exit 9, stand up. And um, I'll, I will be working with pastels today. I'm going to um, do a pastel drawing on sanded paper. Okay. All right, pastel. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I think last, uh, last but certainly not least, we have Elvin. Uh, Elvin Alicia, right? Did I get it, Elvin? Uh, Alicea, yeah, you got oh, it. Right. Elvin, come on. I'm working on it. <laughs> Elvin, um, Alicea. <laughs> yeah, I'm from uh, I'm from North North New Jersey. Um, my mediums are I draw uh, acrylic, oil on canvas. I do charcoal. Um, I do a lot of digital work as well. This is my clothing brand. That's what I do. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. All right, happy to have you. Happy to have you. So no, no one mentioned crayons, Daryl. No one mentioned. 
I, free I mean, plug. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess pastels will probably be the closest <laughs> to a crayon like material, right? Um, but you know, I, I'm here for it. I like the I like the idea that our artists are all sort of mixing it up tonight, right? Um, mm -hmm. because this particular competition isn't as rigid as some of our previous art face-offs where it was strictly acrylic. So I love to hear that we are giving the artists a little more room to be uh, you know, their creative selves. So uh let's slide into the prize, right? Because ultimately I'm sure our viewing audience wants to know what the prize is for the winning artist. So the prize that the winning artist will receive is a contract, a licensing contract with the Newark Museum of Art to have their work converted into merch. Uh, with that being said, I'm actually wearing one of our previous winners' uh, sweatshirts, mm -hmm. which will be available in our gift shop, which opens tomorrow, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and this was done by the artist Dune. Um, and I think it was very poign poignant. He created this last year in the height of the pandemic when you know the world seemed to be going crazy. Um, we had protests happening across the, our, uh, the, basically the world in that moment. And um, his artwork sort of reflects all of that. So. Um, um, you will be able to purchase this sweatshirt along with uh, the winning works of our artists tonight. And one thing I want to underscore is that they also receive a portion of the profit. So we talk about supporting the arts and we want to make sure we do our part and, you know, doing what we can to not only support the arts, but also make people aware of the importance of the right to vote. Right. And with that idea of the right to vote, uh, I want to pass it back to you, Chanel, to talk a little bit about Project Ready's initiatives. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. Uh, so Project Ready is a social justice organization um, born out of the city of Newark, still working in the city of Newark with the intention of activating voters across the city of Newark. Um, we've been working diligently across every election to make sure that everyone has the tools and the resources they need to be able to exercise their power, to be able to exercise their voice. Um, and so we are thrilled to be bringing together some of the most important elements of what makes us uh, excited to build our community. And that is visualizing what civic engagement looks like through art and also having the important conversation tonight about what happens when we do exercise our vote, what happens when we don't. Some important things to note because we have an election coming up um, uh, this, uh, this November 2nd. Um, October 12th is the deadline to register to vote for the November 2nd election. Um, I, I'm pretty sure we've passed October 12th, so I'm, I'm hopeful that everyone took advantage of the opportunity to vote. October 26th is your deadline to request a mail-in ballot to vote by mail in the November 2nd election. October 23rd through the 31st, offers you the opportunity to engage in early voting, voting from home, utilizing the ballot that you have. And by the way, utilizing the ballot boxes for those of you that are not necessarily excited about dropping your ballot off in the mail, uh, Essex County has ballot boxes across the city of Newark. Visit www.projectreadynj.org for more information there. And then November 2nd is election day. It is when we have the opportunity to vote for our next governor, our next lieutenant governor, and the list goes on. So save the dates, lock these in, exercise your power. Speaking of locking it in, let's let our artists lock it in. So artists, we want to go ahead and tell you, you can go ahead, kickstart your works. We'll come back to you as we go throughout the competition to check in to find out what your vision is when we say your community, your power, your vote, what does that look like? What does what does when, what comes to mind and what are you uh, trying to express on Canvas as you relay that message? And speaking of Canvas, I just wanna quickly ask our, our producer to pull up uh, the slide from the winner from last year so you can get a clearer view um, of the winning work that actually won the competition last year. Yes. Um, again, I think going back to what uh, Chanel said, uh, activating your right to vote is really important. Um, this work Work caught uh, or captured a lot of things that were happening during the midst of the pandemic, um, along with um, the protests, the uh, people, again, civically uh, becoming engaged because they see or they saw that they wanted certain change to happen in their local neighborhoods on the local level. And um, with that being said, the way we make that happen is by participating not just in the presidential election but in all the elections especially um the elections that directly impact your communities all right 
Um, so with that being said, I'm going to go uh, back to gallery view because I would like for us to uh, try to throw one more poll question or throw our first poll question up before we jump into our first guest. So uh, we want this to be an interactive experience. So if you can, please pull up our first question. And Chanel, would you mind taking the lead on reading that question for our viewers? Absolutely. And viewers, as a note, please make sure that you engage in the poll. The goal is to make sure that we get you the answers that you need. Um, you should also be aspiring to win, which I think is also what I aspire toward all the time, right, Daryl? <laughs> we come <laughs> to win. Okay, at what age are you legally able to vote in the United States of America? A, you must be at least 18 years of age to vote. B, you must be at least 17 years of age to vote. Or C, you must be at least 21 years of age to vote. 18, 17. 21. Which one is it? Gotcha, gotcha. Right, we're taking, we need a, we need a, a, a clock ticking in I the know, back. Right? Maybe we should do the music. Maybe we should do the music like do, 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 because they don't probably want to hear us sing. I don't. I feel like, Daryl, you're giving me like vibes, like, you know, 107.5 after hey. dark. Like, you're giving hey. me like, you know, the after dark vibe. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't look, don't gas me up. I might have to try to see if I can, you know, moonlight a, as a radio. Yes. Host. <laughs> All right. So I, okay, I think we're ready, ready to uh, pull out our results, right? So yep. uh, let's see what the audience said. Um, um, and oh okay oh, oh right so most of you all got that one absolutely correct the age to vote is 18 um i think that's sort of self-explanatory in most things in life especially here in the u.s uh to participate uh as a adult would be the legal age of 18 so that would also include activating your right to vote um with that i'm looking at the time and we are at our uh first guest. So I want to introduce our first guest and I want to make sure that I do this in a fashion that celebrates all the achievements that this individual has uh, done in their career um, and still are currently working towards. So with that being said, our first guest that will be joining us tonight, um, his name is Jakari Harris. Um, he is a native of Tallahassee, Florida, and the current executive director of the George Floyd Memorial Foundation. Jakari is a social justice activist, inspirational speaker, and the author of Lost and Found finding success in the search of self. Shikari earned his Bachelor of Science degree in business administration from Bethune-Cookman University. During this time as an undergraduate student, Jakari served as student body president. He went to receive his MBA and Master's of Arts in Emergency Management degree. Jakari was also an intern for former California Senator, now US Vice President-elect uh, Kamala Harris, Jakari's diligent efforts have led him to receive numerous awards, including BCU's 40th uh, Under 40 Award and the United Negro College Fund uh, College President of the Year Award. He has been able to study abroad in Senegal, uh, West Africa, and study community, community policing and criminal justice reform. And we have the honor of having him join us tonight to share a little bit in the love of uh, the importance of voting. So with that being said, welcome Jakari. Thank you so much, Daryl. It is a pleasure to be on here with each and every one of you all. I have been just so excited about coming on to this event and meeting the artists and just listening to all the speakers and just speak about how voting um, is, is power and that without your vote, without your vote there, you don't have a voice. Um, and since I've had the honor you know, to serve as the executive director of the George Floyd Memorial Foundation, founded in August of 2020 by the Floyd family, after the tragic death of George Floyd, we have been igniting fire and changing communities and being the change that we wish to see um, in each community that you know, we reside in. Um, so with that, when it comes to voting, I, I simply just have to say, you need to vote. We need to gather our friends, our colleagues, our cousins, our brothers, our sisters, our loved ones to get out there and vote. It is, it is essential. Here we are in the middle of still a middle of a pandemic in the middle of a filibuster and we cannot even get the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act you know to be signed into law it's 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 a filibuster currently and it is sickening because we have all seen millions of people around this world have seen the death of George Floyd on 
in broad daylight and on in the hot streets of Minneapolis. And all George Floyd wanted to do was to breathe, which is a basic function uh, of human life. And he couldn't even breathe. And we have to elect the right individuals into office, which is by voting first, by signing up to vote and knowing who we are voting for and their and their why. Um, so it is important to also know the why behind you know, what representative or what uh, political individual is running for office, because some people have a hidden agenda. And it's time to also ask those necessary questions while they're running, while they're debating, while they're, you know, shaking your hand, while they're uh, saying they'll do this, they'll do that. I mean, so many elected officials have on both sides of the aisle, honestly, have said, I will do this, I will do that, and nothing has been done. And it's just a, it's just a sad uh, day as today is George Floyd's 48th birthday to know that even after his tragic death, even after the hashtags that came before him and the many hashtags that have came after, that much has not been done on a federal level to ensure accountability and to ensure that you know black and brown individuals are protected. Now, what I can say is, you know, we are thankful uh, for what mayors and what different governors have done in several different states. I mean, one example is the mayor of Houston, that is Mayor Sylvester Turner, you know, right when George Floyd, you know, was murdered, he ensured that he banned no knock warrants and that he banned chokeholds. And he's ensuring that uh, police officers are submitting their videos within 30 days after coming into an encounter, you know, with a constituent. So it is like mayors like Sylvester Turner and other individual, other uh, governors and mayors who are really, you know, pushing the needle forward towards full, account full accountability and to ensuring that we're bringing just a new day, Daryl. So I'm just, I'm just excited. And, you know, like I say, you know, your vote is your voice. And without voting, you know, you, you really, you, you, you really can't be a game changer. You know, you can talk, you can tweet, you can, you know, do whatever you think it is necessary. But if you're not going to vote, you're not really standing for anything. Um, and I see um, that you all were able to post the flyer. And like I said earlier, today is George Floyd's 48th birthday. Um, but because of police brutality, we don't have the opportunity. And the family does not have the opportunity to celebrate with him. So this year, what we wanted to do uh, was the just first convening of the um, a volunteering program or where we're being the change through volunteerism. And it's just simply the George Floyd Volunteers Around Week is the opportunity for us all to give back to the communities that we live in and do an act of service through service projects, through supporting our communities, just as George Floyd would have done if he was here. George Floyd was a servant leader. He was a volunteer, a consistent volunteer. And I heard it for myself from the CEO of Salvation Army in Minneapolis. He was a consistent volunteer at Salvation Army. So we're doing what George Floyd would be doing today. And I would I like to report to you all that as of today, we received over 83,000 individuals committed to serving, to doing a service project, an act of kindness for this week. And our goal is 100,000, and we are certain by tomorrow, close of business, we will have well over 100,000 people committed this week to do an act of kindness or a service project that will ultimately enhance our community and provide resources and tools that is needed to succeed. Yeah. I want to underscore a phrase you said there multiple times, my community, right? And yeah. as you highlighted, we, we can tweet about it all day long. We can create art about it all day long. But our real power comes in that idea of putting our uh, voice behind our vote. So uh, as you spoke to, you know, that civic engagement component is really important, but also activating that uh, right to vote. Um, I'm sure Chanel, as she uh, goes through her community dealings, she may have a few words that also express in regard to uh, the importance of voting. Yeah, I mean, I think what's important that's happening right here is we're, we're bringing the village together and we're bringing our villages together nationwide. Um, we are so excited to have you here. And I think what I want to make sure we underscore is what we can be doing in order to help. Voting is the first step in activation. Um, yeah. When you mention uh, acts of kindness and ways that we're showing gratitude to others, ways that we're engaging in social justice, ways that we're honor honoring Mr. Uh, George Floyd, these are all steps in making sure that we're being civically engaged. Um, and so with that, Jukari, I just want to make sure we uh, you underscore again, how can we get involved specifically with making sure that we're supporting 
you guys goal to get to a hundred thousand dollars who are promote a hundred sorry a hundred thousand people definitely <laughs> now, I mean I we, we gotta get to the dollars too right <laughs> <laughs> listen <laughs> where, where the money at <laughs> so so a good question and thank you so much for asking that Chanel so you know go to George foundation.org slash volunteer and sign up and register and share it with your family share it with your friends share it you know with your with your boo whomever you think is necessary share it with every single body because no one is too good to do an act of service no one is too good to do community service whether it's you know raking someone's yard or carrying someone to the doctor or signing up someone uh, to register to vote there there's so many different ways that you can give back. I mean, earlier today, um, I had a quick lunch, but what I decided to do was to pay for a whole family lunch with me. Now, I did not know that it was going to be as much as it was going to be, but it's okay because this is my act of service um, that I gave back. Um, and something else that I really, I've been really speaking about on today is being, is truly being the voice and amplifying our voice um, within our community. You know, when we elect or when we, you know, see elected officials, you know, it is our hope that they will represent who, what, what, what we are amplifying, our voice. And it is time for, you know, especially the black and brown uh, community to continue to work together to amplify our stories. Why? Because see, I've learned from experience that Fox News does not tell it all. I've also learned from experience just being a executive director that newspapers will not tell it all. They, they won't say it all as we will say it. So it is time for us to work together as a collective and move the needle forward, not just for one person, not just for one organization, Organization, not just for Fayetteville, not just for North Carolina, but for the entire world. Yeah. I love it. I, I love it. And we well, dropped a link in the chat. So yeah. uh, for all of you all who are interested in figuring and wanting to know what you can do to contribute uh, to the movement, you have the link there. Please, I encourage you to click the link. Um, we will also have a link on our website um, so that you can always uh, double back uh, if you missed the program live and you're watching us on Facebook or on one of our other social platforms. You can always go back to our website. That's Project Ready's website or the Newark Museum of Arts website. And we'll have the link available for you to be able to click there and, um, you know, again, be a part of the community. Um, we are a museum whose services are predominantly black and brown um, individuals in the city of Newark. So yes. uh, you want to make sure your elected officials are your voice. And so, yes. uh, again, thank you for that, Jakari. Um, but before just, you go, I got a quick question, Daryl. Yeah. So sure. Jakari, what, what did you buy the family? So we it was it, not George Ford family. It was food. So I was. Oh, at yeah, work. I know. What was the food? What'd you get? It was Popeyes, but it was still. Oh, it was, uh, yeah. it was still like this in that car. The bill came up to like a hundred and some dollars. I was not anticipating that. <laughs> it was fine. No, I wasn't. Yeah. It was fine, but I was not. You know, I'm thinking, you know, maybe forty some dollars. But I said, well, <laughs> "What's okay. Popeyes doing with a hundred dollar bill?" I don't but know, see, but I didn't, I didn't like also, you no, know, it was a van, so I did not know there was that many people in there. But it's fine. Right. They, they were blessed. They they and they actually passed it along to someone else because I called back and asked. Mm -hmm. And they pass the act of kindness. And that's what it's all about yeah. is just giving back to those who are who are given to you. And speaking, of, and speaking of giving back, um, you are currently at the Her concert. I do want to acknowledge you taking your you, you've been had a, a, a busy day today. So you're taking your time out to, um, you know, activate our event. But you're also active doing an active live activation at the Her concert right now. Yeah. Right? So actually, I'm still I'm still at my house. Um, it's the Her concert is five minutes away. And I'm actually um, I would love to stay on this. Uh, event this uh, virtual event with you all, but I actually have to go. Her, the singer, is doing a concert. She's on tour, um, and her stop is tonight in Houston, Texas. And as you may or may not know, uh, she released a song um, a couple of weeks after George Floyd's death that's entitled "I Can't Breathe." So tonight, uh, she will be doing an act of service, an act of kindness, and giving back uh, to the Houston community and to the family of George Floyd. So yes. um, I'm looking forward to seeing what that's all going to look look like. So I'm gonna have to get out, get off of here soon and thank go put on my concert sorry. and go from there. Well, shout we, out to you. you, shout out to her, shout out to Popeyes. It's been a wonderful night. <laughs> <laughs> and also shout out to, you know, Black Girl Magic. Um, Megan and Stein's got a, you know, um, Popeyes deal. So you know how we can amplify our voices and come together. It's just we like love that. It.
Love I mean, it. that combination of art and civic engagement, we already said it. And I love that, you know, we're all able to play a part in that. So again, thank you, Jakari, for joining us. Um, I want to sort of toss it back to our artists really quickly, just to maybe check in with one of our artists before we slide over to our next speaker that's joining us tonight. So uh, who do you want to tap Chanel and, and, and ask them about the My Power, My Community, My you Vote? Know, I, I want to tap Elvin. I want to tap Elvin. I want to want to see what's happening here close up, if possible. Yeah. Hey, Elvin. Elvin. Elvin also has like a cheerleading squad in the chat. I've been watching Elvin and Suleiman. Yeah, I hear there people yeah. like, go oh, Elvin, go Elvin. Yeah. <laughs> I wanna, let's, let's tap into Elvin. Elvin, what's happening here? Uh, this is uh, organic colors. Uh, I feel that voting should be organic, should feel like nature. I'm a nature lover, so that's something that you know, these colors are very vibrant to me. I love colors. Yeah, yeah love it, love it. Love can we spotlight it. another Daryl? Do we have a minute? I think we got a minute. We can, yeah, tap, tap someone else, tap someone else. All right, me. Tasha, Tasha. Well, I want to see what's happening with Tasha. All right, I got a, um, you know, voting, like we you guys have been saying, is mm -hmm. a community responsibility, community act. So I got three women linked together, holding the power mm -hmm. of the ballot box. And, um, you know, we've known several times that Black women have saved this country over and over and over again. <laughs> so That's it's only front and center. Only, you know, it's right. We got to be front and center because we hold a lot of power as a people. And, you know, that's what I'm putting on the canvas today. I yes. love it. You underscored a really big important thing, which we're going to dig into a little later in our poll questions about uh, the relevance of you know females who have tackled that uh, equality and equity uh, charge, right? Because it uh, has been women, and specifically women of color, who uh, have led the charge in making sure that uh, we have equality and justice for all, not just you know women of color, but for all people of color. Yeah, um, the, so the black that, woman's agenda. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Now with that, right Chanel, <laughs> I want <laughs> with that, Chanel, I want to know if you would be um okay with introducing our next guest because we're. I would love our... to. I love to. Okay, um, so we are excited to welcome Kyle Learman. He is the former senior policy advisor at the White House and current CEO of Civic Nation, an organization that holds several national programs and initiatives, including Mrs. Obama's voting organization, When We All Vote. Hi, hi, Mrs. Obama, in case you're watching. <laughs> Uh, before joining the White House, Kyle was the uh, Get Out the Vote director in oh. Louisiana in 2010 for Organizing for America, ran for state delegate in his hometown, and served as a special assistant on the Obama-Biden transition team. Kyle is also a proud graduate of George Washington University, where he majored in business. Let's bring Kyle to the screen. I've been excited awesome. to have this conversation Kyle. <laughs> Hello, Chanel. Nice to meet you. I've heard a lot about you. It's good. To I've heard least... nothing but good things about you, Kyle. I'm so excited to be able to virtually meet you now. That's uh, right back at you. You got a great team member there and the one and only Samuel Blackwood. Uh, Hi, we missed him at Civic Nation and, and when we all vote, but I'm so glad he's continuing to do awesome work with you guys so yes yes Samuel live in the flesh Samuel Kyle. is here yes <laughs> <laughs> all right so so Kyle we just want to jump in tell us a little bit about why voting is so important why should people be paying attention to voting and Kyle if you could just dig a little bit deeper why should people be paying attention to voting in local state and national elections totally well First off, thank you again for having me and for all the incredible work that that you all do. Um, and this is an awesome event, by the way. Uh, you know, thank I think people you. people in this in this uh, everyone's got a little Zoom fatigue, and you guys have switched it up. So th with a little art here, so this is just kudos to a creative event. <laughs> as someone whose team has to put on a lot of these, this is awesome. Um, you know, I, I I figured as I sort of talk, thought about uh, what to say here tonight. You know. I'm not an artist by any stretch of the imagination. I'm really an organizer uh, through and through. And that's how I got my start working for President Obama, um, registering voters when he was a senator on his campaign uh, for president back in 2008. And But I think what we should do is ground ourselves in the art of the possible. What mm -hmm. kind of country do we want to build? We want to build a country uh, where 
every American, no matter their background, their color, their uh, gender, uh, every single American has safe, easy uh, access to voting. And uh, we've been a country that has, for the vast majority of our history, not at all been there. We've gotten pretty close recently, but there's still a ton of work to do to make sure uh, every single community across the country has equal and easy access to the ballot box. And, um, you know, when I think about uh, what we can do, this is like, I actually like this problem because it's something we have, we can do something about it. Yeah. We can work and we can organize to change systems so that every single organization and college and university and high school and city government and state and local government is working to create and foster a more engaged democracy and more civic participation. Mm -hmm. We can change the culture in this country so that every American not only thinks about it as their responsibility to vote, but they have an inherent responsibility to help others get informed and vote as well. We can change behavior in this country by making voting a habit, getting it started at an early age. Get, you know, I've got three beautiful young girls. Uh, uh, I don't sleep very much because they're four, two and six months. Uh, but uh, you better believe my wife and I took them to, every time we voted, we've had a kid uh, on our arms or on our shoulders. Um, and we can change policy by doing everything we can to advocate at the federal, state, and local level to make sure that policies reflect our democratic values of creating uh, easy access. I'm so happy you mentioned voting in state and local elections in particular. Um, as someone who's run for, for local office, I, I uh, you know, it's frankly, it's one of the things I get like kind of frustrated about because so many fewer people participate in the elections that um, have real tangible impacts on their lives. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say like, what's the art of the possible? People could vote in local elections at the same level they vote at federal elections, but they often actually choose not to because there's not a billion dollars being spent in a presidential election. So that's why groups like Project Ready, Civic Nation, When We All Vote, investing in an ongoing infrastructure of making folks engaged and civically uh, participating is so cru crucial because we can't rely on a billion dollar presidential campaign to get out the vote uh, every four years. We have to make sure it's becoming a habit and happening year in and year out. Michelle Obama likes to say there are no off years uh, when it comes to voting. And that's true. I mean, there's an election in New Jersey very soon, election in Virginia. Um, and um, I, I fear the apathy um, one of the most important things that we can do to combat the apathy is make it easier, make it simpler. And I know you guys do some wonderful work on same day voter registration, and it's just a clear, clean example of let's make it as easy for people as possible. I actually think the idea of voter registration kind of doesn't make any sense. Like, why do you have to register, like walk in and vote uh, if you're a citizen? Um, and same day registration is basically the the back-ended version of that, right? It's sort of making uh, registration a thing of the past because you can register right on site. So huge fan of, of same-day registration, but we also need to do things like automatic voter registration. We need to make sure that online voter registration is accessible everywhere as well. There's still 12 states where you can't even register to vote online, which is right. totally insane. And then of course we have states that are pulling back. There've been over 400 bills introduced to the state uh, level this year to suppress mostly black and brown votes uh, and, and young voters across the country. So it's so great when states like New Jersey are on the offense on this issue and pushing us in the right direction. Absolutely. Kyle, Kyle, you got me over here on fire. I'm ready to go vote now and then again and again. <laughs> uh, uh, Samuel, wherever you are, can you just drop the link in uh, our chat to make sure that people can engage in um, uh, something that Project Ready does have going on alongside a host of other organizations in the city where we're trying to get same-day voter registration in New Jersey. 
Someone asks, why don't we have it? The answer is, I don't know why we don't have it. We should have it. Kyle, you're right. We have to be making it easier. One thing you mentioned, I just want to hit on before we let you go. You, you talk about the art of possibility. You mentioned at the beginning, you're an organizer, not an artist, but I beg to differ. Uh, I think organizing is an art form. Um, I appreciate it's done that. Well, yes, it's done well. Uh, you can really make some change. People on watching the show right now, they may be voters but they may know people who are not voting. What is your call to action for how the 50 plus, 100 plus people we have watching, how they can begin to organize their community toward change, toward voting, toward power? So um, first things first, I got to work with Project Ready to get same day voter registration passed. So I don't know what your volunteer activations are there, but I'll, pl I'll, I'll do a good plug for you guys there. I think Getting with a state, that link for Kyle. <laughs> uh, getting, you know, working with local and state groups on the ground that have the tools, the training, the resources to help people aim their firepower in the most effective direction is yeah. always a smart thing to to start with. But um, uh, uh, one of uh, President Obama's early kind of lead organizers, a, a gentleman that read um, won Iowa for him mm. back in two thousand and eight. He always told me that um, his organizers were doing unbelievable work around the state, getting folks to knock on doors and, you know, stand outside, uh, you know, drug stores or grocery stores or wherever, farmers markets, registering voters. But he always felt like what actually made the difference for Barack Obama in, in 2008 was the conversations that happened after people knocked on doors, the conversations that have to, mm -hmm. happened at the dinner table, the conversations that happened at the barbershop or the beauty salon or the, uh, you know, the, the work lunch, whatever it is, yep. because those are where you have the most authentic, real conversations with people who you know and people who you trust. Yes. And yes. so I would challenge everyone on this call, not only to work through an organization uh, like Project Ready to get good policies passed, to organize um, but also just do the basic blocking and tackling of starting conversations uh, yeah. with your family, with your friends. I have a friend, uh, I'm, I'm here in Maryland. Um, and uh, hi, Maryland. I, I, yeah, and, <laughs> and I have this one friend who's not a particular, like I'm like the political guy in my friend group, right? right. Um, and I'm the one who's always talking about stuff. I text him every election and I say, I'm not going to name him here because I don't want to embarrass him that he needs a text <laughs> reminder, but I text him every year and I say, Hey man, you, are you registered? Did you update it? I know you moved. Hey, you can early vote today. It, it's super easy. It's down. I know where he lives. So it's down the street at the silver spring civic center. Um, he has forgotten to early vote sometimes. So I tell him to go on election day, but so just a little text message nudge from me yeah. is also, you know, but it's, it's because I know him. It's because I have a relationship with him. So, do the work through an organization, go knock on doors, make calls to your legislators, but also make sure you're doing that work in your own networks and with your own friends and family. You know what, Kyle? Project Ready is going to launch next to friend campaign. Is I'm, I'm seeing this as you're talking live. We need to be making sure that we're going above and beyond to text our friends, to call our friends, to get them out to the polls or to get them to use their ballot that's being mailed right to their home. Yep. Um, this has been amazing. Daryl, what am I missing here? Because Kyle we, got me revved up. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Kyle hit it. He hit every marker um, that we could have possibly dreamt of. He talked about conversation and community because let's be clear, that's what it's really about, having those conversations and that dialogue within your communities. And if we're talking about expressing the power of voting that really comes from by you know you uniting the community having the community be on the same page for what they want and being able to advocate for that so with that kyle we thank you for joining us um we don't want to take any more of your time oh. you've been so generous to step in with this i'm sure chanel's going to be reaching out to you to do some more partnering in the future so uh we like want to tomorrow shout out to kyle you. tomorrow I love it. well and my, my <laughs> wife is uh grew up in south orange so uh, i love it we got, right a, I got a, we got a little new jersey in the fam here so so yes. it's great to be able to spend this some time with y'all and um, just uh, thanks for everything you're doing. Look forward to staying in touch and doing more with you guys. Talk Thank to you, you soon, Kyle. Thank you. Have a good one.
So I saw in our chat that someone was inquiring about how do you vote for a specific artist? Well, how do you vote? You're going to get the opportunity to vote for your favorite artist at the end of the program. So we're going to let the artists continue to work, but we want to um, give them enough time or I should say ample time to really get their thoughts out onto that canvas so that after they explain what their work is and what it's all about, we're going to then open up the polls so that you all are voting or I should say viewing from home will have the opportunity to vote since tonight is all about voting, right? Yes, um, so it's all about the art of voting, Ooh, I love it. I love it. Now, Chanel, speaking, voting. speaking <laughs> of art and, and the art of voting, let's talk to another artist. So I want you to pick yes. another artist to, to have that in, in conversation because we have two more artists who we didn't get the chance to uh, spotlight. So let's tap into that now. And interesting because the two artists that we didn't spotlight yet are seem to be in direct competition with each other. They had some feel that. Thing. I feel uh, that. So <laughs> let, let's let's hit up Suleiman. Suleiman, what's going on over there? Yeah. Well, I'm over here uh, just tapping into the community, showing the youth oh, wow. um, because that's the Can next. You bring it a up. little closer to us, Suleiman, just a little bit. <laughs> You did a lot of work in that yeah, short. My goodness, how long has it time? been? Like five minutes? <laughs> <I'm saying>. <laughs> <laughs> Suleiman's like not playing minutes. any games. I'm like, I'm, I'm nervous because I know. Perfect, Suleiman, perfect. Wow. So basically right here, what you see is um, me showing the community, but the young community, because that's going to be the ones that's next up. Yeah. And one of the parents are going to be holding one of the children, you know, showing how we're still holding up our children. And I'm going to get to the point where we're showing people down here going to vote, but I'm just dancing around. Okay. Um, and messing around with some impressionistic colors, um, warm colors and, you know, autumn type colors mixed in. And, you know, that's what I'm doing so far. Love it. Well, okay, Suleiman, all right, let's, let's go over to Martrice. Let's see what's yes. happening <laughs> over there. Martrice, where'd you go? She getting it. She getting her uh, pastels, right? Pastels. Yes, pastels. I had to pause my music. I didn't want the music to come through. Meanwhile, you got a lot done as well. I, I, you and Suleiman, I really do feel like y'all are like in direct. You're, you're like, you know what? My eyes on the tiger and I'm looking at Suleiman and Suleiman's looking at you and you all are like, I, I'm coming for you. Listen, Suleiman is a true gem, and a win for him is a win for me, okay? Ooh. Oh, yes. yes. Come on, community. Come on, community. Come on, villain. Come on, villain. Look, listen. So tell us what's going to happen. The winners is going to be all four of us going to win tonight, and they're going to put our <laughs> image together. Hey. I'm advocating for that. I'm advocating for all of us. Suleiman is always trying to get everybody to win. When I told y'all I'm the winner, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> It's rigged. The competition My is rigged. is consistent. <laughs> I love it. The competition is rigged. You're like, look, I'm submitting my work, final order, hey. and I'm sorry, artist, you know. <laughs> right. I love it. Right. Well, well, while we're here, uh, let's go take, take another poll question before uh, time runs out, because I talked earlier about the importance of women and the right to, you know, women voting. So with that being said, um, Chanel, would you mind reading this question and taking it for our sure. audience? Sure. When did African-Americans fully win the right to vote in the United States of America? Was it A, 1869, B, 1965, C, 1870? Drum roll, giving people some time. Daryl, did you did you know this answer? Like, did you readily know the answer? So this I knew only because if you never watched the television show Blackish, um, it is a yes. not only entertaining show but very informative show, and they talk about this particular question in that show. But y'all not saying it. <laughs> I, I almost tripped up right agree the answer with what people are voting. I heard his voice come in and I heard the answer. <laughs> <laughs> so let's oh, go ahead and reveal to our like audience. Yeah, yeah, let's reveal to our audience and see uh, what the final mm -hmm. result is, or at least what our audience believes the answer to be. So it looks like a great majority of you all believe that the answer is 1965. Mm -hmm. And I guess we can do a drum roll, da -da 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 right? The correct answer would be, ba -da -bum, 
1965. You all are absolutely correct. So we can go ahead and get rid of that uh, poll um, after, uh, did we already show the results? I think we showed the results. So we can go ahead yeah. and get rid of the poll uh, to our producer working the back. Um, and I just kind of want to quickly just highlight why that is the correct answer, right? Um, I know a lot of you may have been like, hold up, wait a minute. What about the amendment that was passed in 1870, right? So yeah. while 1965 is the correct answer, thanks to the Voting's Right, the Voting's Right Act, um, of 1965, only then were all Americans in all parts of America, uh, truly, that, that means Black and Latinx voters, able to vote without perdition. Um, in 1870, it is correct that that was when the 15th Amendment was passed, um, and, when they, and it was supposed to allow uh, all Americans, no matter your race, creed, to be able to exercise the right to vote. However, uh, many specifically in the southern regions of the U.S. were still barred from voting um, due to the uh, great leniency showed to the Confederate states. Uh, so with that being said, part of that is what inhibited, um, you know, voters in the South um, to be able to, you know, make change or bring about that change, right? Um, not only that, um, Lincoln's successor, Andrew Johnson, was who allowed southern Confederate states to enact their original restrictive laws known as Black Code. Okay. Uh, which strictly governed Black citizens, denying the suffrage and other rights, including the rights to vote, despite the 15th Amendment granting the right to vote uh, to all Americans. So many Blacks and Latinx voters were met with literacy tests, poll taxes, and violence just for attempting to exercise their right to vote. Uh, these restrictive laws were known as Black Codes um, and eventually would be later e uh, evolved to are known as uh, what we call today Jim Crow laws. So mm -hmm. a lot of rich history there. And I think it's important to highlight that because, um, again, these, you know, this is why it's important to, you know, be able to, to vote. You know, it's important to be able to vote um, and use our power um, as a tool to be able to advocate for change. And if you are an American citizen and you don't have that privilege or that, uh, not that privilege, but if you don't have that right, because it's every American's right to yeah. vote, um, then you really can't bring about change that's going to affect you in the positive. So um, yeah. I just wanted to run through those facts about why it was important um, and the importance of uh, laws and why we vote, because it's because of that law that was passed in 1965 which is what opened up the floodgates. So uh, Chanel, um, we're getting, our time is winding down. Yeah. <laughs> like who knew that, that hour goes fast. Fast, this one like, we had Su Suleiman, we're five minutes. Um, agree, agree. But yes, agree. It, is, it is going fast. Should we do one more poll question? I would say, um, you know what? Let's, uh, let's, yeah, let's knock out one more poll question. I mean, we do have time, so why not? So let's jump yeah, into the just one question. more, because I feel like you got really inspired by Tasha and what she was talking about with the women. Yes. And yes. you wanted to get to that question? I did, I did, I did. There. Let's get there. Um, I did. When did all women of all creeds officially have the right to vote in the United States of America? A, 1920, B, 1943, C, 1965. Uh, we're going to run, run this in seconds, audience. Cast your vote, cast your vote, so we can get to the, the art of voting. <laughs> yes, I love it, right? And I love to see how the, I'm looking at the meters as the, the people are responding, and I see the line swaying and going back and forth. Yeah. People cast their ballots, which is the same excitement, I guess, uh, our political figures have as they watch the numbers go up and down as they're, you know, yes. activate their right to vote. Absolutely. Um, so where where are we? Let's let's looks check out like, our poll results. Yeah, let's go ahead and show the audience. Let's go ahead and so so it looks like a uh, uh, vast majority of you picked uh, 1965. Coming in on a very close second would be 1943. Um, so um, I guess let me drop a few facts about that if you don't mind. Do you mind, Chanel? I don't mind. I don't all mind. Right, so, <laughs> so the correct answer um, is 19 again, 65. If you're paying attention, that was a trick question um, from our question previously. Uh, the reason being is that, you know, only in 1965 did African American women and Latinx women also officially win the right to vote, prohibiting voting discrimination, which often was used to prevent women from both co uh, communities to be able to vote. Again, due to Jim Crow laws uh, that were still active throughout the majority of the US um, that made it almost illegal um, until uh, you know the date where all women in Crees were officially able to vote in uh, 1965. So with that being said, uh, women, 
as we spoke to earlier, especially when we were highlighting Tasha's uh, work, it was women who sort of moved that, uh, pushed that charge forward to allow for uh, all people, <clears throat> all people, no matter uh, where you come from, no matter uh, what your ethnicity is, to be able to activate their right to vote, which I think is a beautiful thing. Um, do we want to do one more check in, Chanel, with our artists before we sort of? I, I think it's time. Yeah, I think it's time to check in and get it going right <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm for it. so let's just do one like final round robin of our artists really quickly what they're working on um to show what they have so at this moment artists um you all can sort of like i, I guess put that finishing brush stroke or uh pastel stroke onto your camera or crayon uh, or crayon or crayon right i don't want to make I mean, every art tool matters right <laughs> just like every, every tool matters every tool <laughs> matters absolutely um so with that being said uh we can, do you want to kick it off with Tasha Chanel? Or I'm gonna I, let you I, so how'd you know? You read my mind. I'm like looking at Tasha. Tasha, <laughs> I want to see this. Tell, show me, tell me. All right, well, you know, this is it. It's not even close to done. I'm really like jealous of Suleiman because he got so much done in such a short <laughs> amount of time. I want to be like that at some point in life. But um, Tasha, I, I'm going to be honest. It looks like you got a lot done. Oh, see thank some hands. Thank you. We're good. <laughs> thank yeah. you. But... I'm, I'm loving it. Like, you know, we, like you guys have said over and over again, voting is your power. Black women have led the charge in a lot of political movements, a lot of social movements, you know, I don't know if we were trying to, it just kind of worked out that way. And I really wanted to illustrate that in this piece. And this is for me personally, this is so far out of my comfort zone in terms of mm -hmm. subject matter. I just kind of, I'm inspired by just life. But, you know, voting and community is a huge part of our lives. And it's important to get out there and have a direct impact on your community. And one of the best ways to do that is to vote. So, um, yeah, here it is. I'm, lo I'm loving it so far. Oh, yeah. Tasha, is it really I love great? it. This is, yeah, right? Stay tuned. This is the Black Women's Agenda. Tasha, I'm going to call you. <laughs> I'm that's four more, four more. <laughs> that looks, I mean, it really looks I amazing. Love it. The box is levitating in her hand as yeah. they are joined. It sort of speaks to like the synergy of the power of women, right? Especially yes. women of color and how when you all unite, it's a whole nother force that, I mean, a, a half of the boycotts that MLK did would not have been possible without the power of women of color. Um, we think about a lot of the uh, initiatives that are happening right now in this moment. Um, you know, uh, the representative in Atlanta, like all of that's being pushed by women of color. So I love, love, love to see it. And um, I mean, vote, the, all of you watching at home, look, if Tasha's your girl, we're, we're hoping you'll drop that vote in her ballot box when we oh, allow the poll to be released a little later. Uh, who do you want to tap next, Chanel? Who do you want to tap next? All right, let's go to, uh, let's keep it in the order. Let's go okay. to Elvin. All right, Elvin. Elvin. Let's Hopefully check he can it. hear us over the music. I know they were jamming some of our artists. And I want to know what's playing in the background. <laughs> I, uh, I was playing Tyler Creator in the background. <laughs> Love it. All right, Elvin, talk, talk to us. What's happening in your piece? Um, I wanted to use bold colors. Uh, as I said before, like it's it's very organic, but it's also something that should be in your face, something very loud. So I use the black as a contrast for that. Um, and it's just like it's right there in your face like you can't unsee it. Um, and as everyone else said, you know, your voice, your vote is something that is powerful. It matters if you want to have a consensus, if you want to have a bright future um, where like, you know, People of color, children, you know, different ages, sexes could come together into um, into a community that that brings fruit to positive change. Yes. So that that's what this is to me. This is amazing, Elvin. And you brought up something really important. I want to underscore. You said you can't unsee it once you vote. And we, if you ever get to a point where you don't vote or you question voting or you stand behind the right. scenes and watch, you can't unsee the power that you have when you exercise your vote. I love that, Elvin. Uh, th thank you for your piece. We're going to let you keep working a little bit before we, we get to it. Uh, let's go to Martrice. Hey. hey. <laughs> let's check her out. I didn't finish at all. I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera around. So that way you guys can see the wording on here. Ah. 
comes that? Oh, we got some wood. You, you all are some wow. Yes. It is beautiful. Wow. So um, yeah. what I wanted to do here was, you know, people have been feeling so discouraged about politics and voting um, and for just cause. But I just wanted to encourage people with movement in my art that voting is important because it helps us to move forward. Nobody knows our community better mm -hmm. than us and the things that are important to our community. And so with voting, we get to align people in positions uh, who can push forward to the forefront of politics, the issues that are important to our community. And, and so um, there's power in that and there's movement in that. And yeah. so my piece is all about voting the community forward. Yeah. Ooh, voting the community. Oh my goodness. I'm going to call Chanel you can't. too. <laughs> <laughs> Chanel can't handle it. Chanel can't handle I mean, it. I can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> Vote the community forward. Yes. Okay. You you, you did that. You All did. right. Fully and, mine. And, oh, and, sorry. As, sorry, Daryl. No, you're good. I just, as we move on to, as we move towards Fully Mine, I just want to highlight someone um, highlighted in the chat really quickly um, about uh, seeing the works. We're going to have all the artists pull their works to their cameras at the end. So as soon as we chat with Suleiman, we're going to have all the artists stop and have them pull their works close into the camera. So that one final view before we launch our poll. And I also want you all artists to know that we're going to post the completed works on our social media account. So no matter who the winner is tonight, because all of these works are amazing. We want to be able to showcase this on all of our social media platforms. So uh, we're going to ask that at the end of our competition, if you would take a photo of your completed work um, and then, you know, email and send that in to us here at the museum. And we're going to make sure that we get that on our social media. But uh, Suleiman, you're up. I just want to say the chat is going crazy. Marjorie, we're voting the community forward. I feel my heart pumping. Like, I just want you to know what's happening here. OK, Suleiman, what, what, look at Suleiman. <laughs> so, so basically, um, just going with my power, my community, my vote, just showing how it's important for everybody to make this happen. The young and the old, and this uh, signifying a fist for power, showing that together we can kind of do this. And just dancing around with uh, different parts of the community to show that we are here and it's necessary for us to have all of us together to get through Suleiman, did your canvas start off blank? I just want to make sure. <laughs> they actually start off blank. This is amazing, Suleiman. We love it. it. It really, truly does take a village. And we, as uh, voters, are accountable to the generation before us. I mean, generation coming up after us. Um, and so we have to make sure that we're always taking that into accountability. This artwork is amazing, Daryl. What, what are we doing here? What's oh, I, all I can say is I feel very nervous for all of the people in the viewing from home because they're the ones that have to make a decision. How are I you mean, I, I, fortunately, unfortunately for us, we don't, we can't vote. So we oh. can't vote and the artists can't vote for themselves. So, I mean, I'm looking at Elvin's work. I'm blown away. I'm looking at Tasha's work, uh, Martrice, Suleiman, like all of them really put in some like, work and i'm like we gotta when we do this live I'm, like i told the uh, when we had the battle of the wars artists i'm gonna bring i want all of these artists from our virtual competitions to be able to like do this in person so that people can't because it's it's something magical when you're in the mix of yes. a state when they're creating art right so yes. we're gonna have to bring them to the museum and have this live now that we're starting to get back into our live programming um and i'll talk a little bit about some of our live upcoming programming happening in October this month. So before we get into that, I guess we should go ahead and launch the poll so that our artists yeah, can. And did you uh, want me to give an explanation to my piece? Or... <laughs> I mean, we're. I don't. I don't think it would be fair to the artist being your work was already completed, Chanel. Before we hopped on this, uh, just, you know, this like you know, they, they work. They like it's a hand. I use my hands. To do this. <laughs> Voting is a hands-on activity. <laughs> I like where you're going with this, but we, we definitely want to give room to the artists who worked so diligently during this yes. last hour. But we got you next time, uh, okay. Chanel. We got you next time. So what I'm going to ask is all the artists sort of to bring your devices close to your work so that our viewers yes. at home can get one final look. And then our producer who is working the last <laughs> of our event, 
Um, not yet, but in like five seconds, if you can launch that poll so our viewers at home can make that decision to vote. But go ahead and zoom in for all of my artists. Get it nice and close oh, in that man. camera there so our viewers at home big, come on over and bring yours in too because you have people in the chat who want to see your work up close. Yes. So, yeah. Big prizes, Daryl. Tell, tell us the prize again while we're, while oh. we're building the art. All of our winners will have the opportunity to get a licensing contract with the Newark Museum of Art, where they will have their artwork converted into merch, like what I'm wearing. So I'm wearing, currently wearing one of our former winners. You can purchase this sweatshirt on our website. Um, and if you're, if you're watching via Zoom, you can go ahead and drop your vote in now. Um, but it, you can purchase this sweatshirt on our website starting tomorrow. Our gift shop is back open. Um, and I believe the sweatshirt should be there uh, within the next couple of weeks. It may not be available as of at this very moment, but a lot of other items we have available in our gift shop are. So um, I would encourage you to come, come to the museum, visit us in person. Our doors are open. We are free to Newark residents. I can't express that enough. If you live in the city of Newark, the Newark Museum of Art is free to all Newark residents. It's a gym inside of a gym. Um, and I would encourage you to come and check out all of our cool programs you missed. Speaking of cool programs, if you didn't see our event from last weekend, we had a whole unveiling of a new work called Three Half Lozenges by artist Philip K. Smith III. And that work is gorgeous. It is a permanent installation in front of the museum. And it, you can, if you come to visit us at night, you will see it as it lights up the entire block. Um, oh, you were there, Chanel, weren't you, for that uh, event? Yeah. Oh, wait. I thought you meant you were about to run another. I was about to say, oh, it sounds amazing. <laughs> but okay, yes, that, I did come to the event. Project Ready was there. Quick plug, if I may. Please yeah. make sure you like our Project Ready uh, Facebook page. Uh, please follow us on Instagram. Please, please participate. It takes you two seconds to participate in our, our the link that we just dropped to promote and activate same-day voter registration. Let's let our legislators know that we want same-day voter registration. Ooh, um, yes, and check yes. us out on www.projectreadynj.org to volunteer, get involved, and to learn about the power of your vote. And while uh, we're we, plugging as the votes yeah. are still coming in, because I still see the bars moving. So viewers at home, I see you. I see you. And it's a tight, 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 tight race. I'm just going to put it's it out tight. there. I can't it's see tight. You can't, I, 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 like, I can't wait to share, but I'm going to hold off because I want to okay. plug the museum as well, right? I want to make sure that if you are not already following the Newark Museum of Art on social media to learn about cool events like this and how you can participate, because maybe you will be on the screen next time um, working in collaboration with our other fellow artists. Um, and or maybe you might be performing at our museum. We partner with Marco Hall, um, who is celebrity designer to the stars, who had an amazing um, collection that he debuted in, in partnership with Philip K. Smith III's work um, that we launched last week. So there's always opportunity and always space for local artists to work with our global artists, right? And, um, you know, uh, we love creating space here at our museum. So follow us on social media. That is Newark Museum Art on Facebook as well as Instagram. And if you can, go to our website to find out all about our cool events. Uh, we have a Halloween event coming up, which I'll talk about after we announce the winner. Um, yeah. But, you know, let me plug that now because once you all find out the winner you may want to bounce so let me Halloween event, uh, yeah, Halloween event that's happening. Um, that is October 29th. That is available on our website. You can register for that event. We will have cocktails done by All Points West Distillery. Yes, Newark, New Jersey has its own distillery right here in the city of Newark, and they will be in our garden. It is so good. Oh yes, they have. Oh so good. Oh my god. What time? What time does this does it start? Um, it's the evening event. I believe it starts at 7 p.m. Um, I'll be there event, at oh, five. There it is. Oh, you'll be there at five. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah, five. The right. <laughs> now, the cool thing about this, not only will we have uh, All Points West Distillery doing their thing with the drinks, how we're also going to have a silent disco, right? So if you've never been to a silent disco, that's when you go to, uh, it's like a club setting, or in our case, a garden setting, you'll give be given a set of earphones, and we're going to have three DJs that you can choose from to click into your earphones so that you can jam out with you and your friends um, and, and just have a blast. So with that, we'll have games there'll be a haunted uh component to this as well i believe our old schoolhouse will be uh part of the haunted uh 
component of this along with our firehouse. So not only will you get to, you know, maybe get, you know, scared senseless, but you also get a cocktail or a couple of cocktails, depending on what type of night you want. And you get to dance the night away along with there being cool outdoor games um, that you can participate in. And I believe we're also giving away a free cocktail for everyone who shows up dressed up. So you have to be 21 in order to drink. So let me underscore that. But if you just show, show up dressed up, that's a free drink. So come pre-game with us. That's what I like to say, right? Hey. And then bounce out to the city to those night-night parties a little later. But all that information is on our website. And we also have our Winter Wonderland event happening as well. Friday for the adults, that's cocktails and can, uh, cocktails and candy canes. We're going to have a comedian. We're going to do drag bingo. There's going to be a whole lot of cool things happening on Friday night. Um, and the All Points West will be back in the building for that event. And um, we're going to, on Saturday, be make it more family friendly. Um, we have Premier Dance Company. They'll be doing a, the, a performance of the Nutcracker. There'll be an ice skating ring set up in our parking lot on Saturday. Uh, Are you afternoon. kidding me? A whole ice skating ring, yeah. So we, we're really getting into the season. You know, it's, we, we understand and COVID is still a thing. So we're trying to make sure we can do celebratory things outside. That'll be fun, but also um, that'll be engaging, right? So yes. I would encourage you all to check us out on the web, www.newyorkmuseumart.org. And you best believe Project Ready will be at those events as well to get you activated. I'm coming, for, I'm coming, I'm hey, coming. And we're for. coming. And do we get prizes if we win the costume competition? Or did I just throw that out so, so so there's really no competition with the costumes you get a free cocktail so just oh, okay, okay. if you put enough energy to put on an outfit you know a costume then you show up and this is for all my college students and local uh youth and young adults that are uh in in our audience tonight I encourage you to bring your friends of friends of friends of friends because I'm sure that it's a Halloween falls on a weekend this weekend this year so I'm and, sure and um, Daryl I'm gonna I'm gonna push there for our seniors as well Oh. They need a good time too. And we're going to have yes. everything from house music to yes. club to remember three DJs for you to pick from. So there's going to be a wide orientation of music. And it looks like our polling has slowed down and the votes okay. are in. I think I'm we're nervous. ready. Artists, um, are you all ready? Let me have your cameras and screens on. So for all my artists, if you can. I want something good. Yes, we yes, are yes. we are voting the community forward. <laughs> <laughs> I just I'm sorry, I, I cannot get that out of my head. <laughs> I love it, right? Right. Yes. So I guess a drum roll, right? So we can unveil yes. and our producer is going to unveil the winner of this art face off election edition in partnership with Project Ready. I know I'm nervous too, Chanel. I'm nervous too. So <laughs> Drum roll, please. Here we go. Winner is. I feel like I'm a DJ. Or maybe the computer maybe not. I'm not a Timberland. Oh, bit, bit. I think we got it. It's coming up. Is it coming up? And the winner. <gasps> Martrice, Martrice, congratulations, Martrice. Wow, when I say this race, the community forward. Oh. When I say this race was very tight, when I say neck and neck, I was looking at this like you all yeah. came and you all brought your friends. Everybody's friends had to be in the chat because this race was so <laughs> neck and neck. I wasn't sure who was going to win. Like, congratulations, first and foremost, to all of the artists. You all did a phenomenal job. I want to, you know, big up you all because again, this isn't uh, about who's better. This is a shared, as we talked about earlier, this is a uh, shared event and uh, celebrating a shared expression of celebrating our community artists. Chanel, you were going to chime in there? I was just saying it's collective forward movement. <laughs> collective forward. I, I, we gotta just, I think we got to get the voting. Like, we got to get that on a shirt. I like That's that. I like that. in and of itself, Martrice coming soon uh but yeah that. shout out to every single artist here it has been truly a pleasure watching you all go i don't want to say go to work i want to say go to passion because we mm -hmm. could see the passion we could feel it um and we just have loved being able to be in your presence during this moment yes martrice final winning words we'll give you your, your, your couple of seconds to shout yes. out your mom and whoever else you may want to shout out in your winning speech yeah everyone everyone like y'all have been saying, New Jersey is an art family. A win for one of us is a win for everybody. Let me just say that. So I'm glad that you had all of us here because at the end of the day, we got this message across and uh, we're encouraging people to vote and we're going to come out on the second and show off and show out and do what we need to do to push our community forward. And thank you so much. I, I can't wait for the next steps. 
Thank oh, you. So and much. the next steps are coming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and understand <laughs> all of you, as we said earlier, are winners. Again, we want to thank you all for being a part of this. Chanel is so inspired by you all tonight. I guarantee each and every one of you, you're going to be back again for another event, whether it's live painting on site for us, something else. Like you all are so freaking talented i have have to just go there like we got to bring you to to the museum to do some other things so with that congrats martrice and congrats to all of our artists who joined us all of you all watching from home if you want to donate to the newark museum of art i think we're going to run that slide up really quickly if you enjoyed this program and you would love for us to bring more uh virtual and in-person programs to you like the halloween event um that's coming up and programs like this. The information is there on your screen. We encourage you to go ahead to uh, log in. We're going to drop that link into the chat. You can find that information on our website as well at www.newyorkmuseumart.org and donate. And if you want to support our, our collaborators in this project ready, could you drop your um, information one more time, um, Chanel, before we say good night? Yes, absolutely. So please visit www.projectreadynj.org. Um, we are really excited to get to know you, to get you activated, and to continue to make sure you're getting people voting. Some big, amazing things have come from tonight. Um, and you're right, Daryl, this will not be the last that these uh, artists hear from uh, Chanel McLeod by way of Project Ready. <laughs> Yes, and it's been an honor to be able to do this this annual, as you said, because we're going to do this. This is our second year. We're going to do this again. And hopefully each time we do it, we get closer to doing it in person live, right? So uh, with that, uh, thank you, Chanel. It's been an honor to be able to sit yeah. beside you. Yeah, well, I think we got to go on the road or something. We like should. That. We should take this show on the road. I mean, yeah. let's see we can, we, funding. Let's talk to our funders to see what they can make happen, right? I want to go to uh, Alabama next. Ooh, can okay, we do that? Alabama, you know, I, I, I saw that just from. now. I saw Alabama. You saw it? Like Birmingham is where my, I have my family's all from Jefferson County. So I'm a Virginia boy, but who lives in Newark now. But I, when I say uh, Birmingham, that's where my roots are. So my Jefferson yeah, County. We're headed, we're headed to Alabama. This is okay. happening for us. I'm, I'm following, <laughs> following your lead. Again, okay. thank you. <laughs> Again, thank you all for joining us tonight. And I guess that's a wrap for us on our end. Artists will be in touch and good night. Good night. Good night.